later. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Ireland. We landed uh, about 30 minutes ago. First stop was this little cafe and we got meat potatoes and mash balls. <laughs> I didn't sleep very much. <laughs> look, come look at this. They asked me at the rental place, do I want a stick shift? I said, of course, but they were uh, in limited availability. So he goes, do you want a Ford Cuda? And I'm like, what? And I'm picturing like a Barracuda, which isn't a Ford. No, I don't think it is. I think it's a Plymouth Barracuda. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, this is what a Ford, oh, it's a Cougar. Yes. I thought it was Cuda. Cougar. Yeah, it's awful. I love Ford, but. This. Most things are better than this for sure. Yeah. You should drive my croissant. <laughs> you did. You got a Nissan croissant and I got a Ford Cougar. <laughs> we are, uh, we're heading over to Drift Games. I got a new space that looks absolutely unbelievable. Uh, they have a full video tour of it, but I've intentionally not watched it because I want to see it in person for the first time. Same. Made some poor financial decisions on the plane. You guys <laughs> will find out about that in a few months. Is that a tweak or a wing? I don't know. <laughs> Bro, that, that trucker was laughing his ass <laughs> off at you. <laughs> he's like, this dude does not know what he's doing. I didn't know what to do. I was like, uh, I stopped. Did they stop? I don't know what these signs mean. Hey, is that Officer Dan? Okay, we're at the right spot. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought that was it. We're in the wrong goddamn side of the road. He just that was. was. James is bad. He almost got off by a few trucks. Rookies. <laughs> how, do you like, how do you like my Ford Cougar? It's old and attractive. I knew that was a palm tutor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were recording. <laughs> big Ford big guy. What's up, dude? How are you doing? How are you? Good to see you. Hey, hello. hello. How are you? Good. Tired? Yes. Hello, Mike. What's up? Oh. How are you? Snap. Hello. I see him. No, he was stealth mode back there. <laughs> nice. Any driving with Adam and Colette, man, but get me out of the car with James. <laughs> this guy, we're there almost 14 accidents already about to happen, man. Well, the one was pretty bad. Yeah. We found out there's a used car sale lot at no, uh, Drift Games. No, yes, they, there is. No, there's not. Yes, there is. They lied to him. And they're they're not, none of them are for sale. <laughs> what is this? That's a Maserati. <laughs> All right, Ken, tell me. Okay, so this <laughs> is the engine block. All right, welcome. So this is our new home, but it's got like five or six different businesses. So it's centered around Dean Motors, which is here. So they sell like performance cars, classic cars, unique things. So basically they've got a showroom here and a lot of extra cars outside, as you've seen already. Um, and then that's their showroom. That's their workshop. So as you can see, working on a random variety of things from Subaru to Rolls Royce. Uh, we're up here in our Drift Game Studios. You've got a place that does wheel refurbs over here. You've got a detailer behind there, and then there's a place that fixes motorbikes behind here. So this and is Car Central. Loads of stuff going yeah. on. There is so much going on here. If any of you guys are, are from the Connecticut area, and you know, I think it's called like maybe Industrial Plains Road. There's like one road in Wallingford where everybody's shops are, and it's like, like probably like a quarter mile. This is basically Wallingford in a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. Yeah. There's so much going on here. And even we're still getting used to it because it's only open the last few weeks. Yeah. So it's only really operational now. And still getting used to like the variety of what's around from like Alpina to AMG to 911, Bentley, whatever. It's cool. Who knows? I love the variety. Yeah. Yeah. I think Adam's wallet does not love the variety. <laughs> yeah. well, thankfully, I made a poor decision on the plane, so I can't make one here. Nice. Look at how small the wheels are. Those are sticky too. Yeah. I didn't notice yesterday. These are uh, these are tens. All of that. <laughs> there are three lugs. <laughs> Imagine. It's crazy that full size seats fit in here. Mm -hmm. Are they touching? There's actually a bit of space between. No. Wow. I've seen these wheels probably like two dozen times, but I've never seen an actual car. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Like three videos a year. And the car itself is sick. How are you? <laughs> what does what something like this like typically go for? Here, probably 15, 16,000 euro. Like a, a, a really early good one is 40, 50,000 euro on it. Wow. Yeah. They, um, they're hard to get original ones. They've all been touched. Like there's no, no such thing as a completely unmolested one nowadays. They were just cheap cars. Everyone just thought it's an old Mini. 
put wheels on it, yeah. put a cage on it, um, change the engine. You could get the engine really cheap. The so yeah, I've never like had one without a cage. M4 on really. a cage, but like you don't want to crash it. I don't know so. I've, I've, every single one I've had is had a cage. Hey Dave. Hello, Adam. I don't think we've said hello on video yet. <laughs> we've been running around. It's good to have everybody here. So we're in Simon Dean's uh, classic and prestige car showroom. Yeah. This is something I don't think anyone in America has ever seen before. So this is an MG Metro underneath, which is the most boring, cheapest car you could buy ever. Rubbish. And for some reason they said, hey, we're going to go Group B rallying in the 80s. And they put the engine in the back and put a ridiculous wide body on it. And this is a complete like replica of one that's road legal. So I was going to ask, yeah. is this road legal? The ra rally car is not road legal, but this guy built it specifically just so he could drive it on the road. That's and now it's really cool. Cool. This is yeah. like the most obnoxious front <laughs> split or anything from the group. It, it looks like a um, it looks like a 99 spec FD wing. Just, like yeah, just turned upside down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this car made no sense. Even for the brand, it made no sense because they were the most boring, dull, old man's brand. And they just mm -hmm. said, ah, groupie rally, let's go. So <laughs> they built one of these things. It's a two liter turbo in the back. Yeah, some guy in Northern Ireland just said, I want one of those, but I want to put a plate on it and drive it around to car shows and he just built it literally from the ground up with a lot of the original parts from the rally car. My kind of lad. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the diff and go have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> lad. Before we go check out the amazing new Drift Game studio, I wanted to remind you that the FD RX-7 giveaway is still live, where every $5 you spend on LZMFG or Drift HQ is gonna give you enter for a chance to win. The merch is great, we got other stuff on LZMFG, and I also wanted to add, in addition to everything on the Drift HQ website, if you're getting a custom quote or placing order with our amazing sales team, that will still be eligible for giveaway entries. So if you got a complicated build and you want help specking out some turbo, engine stuff, body parts, whatever, we got you covered. It's an amazing car, and you're sleeping if you don't have it. This is a bit bit of a level up from the shed last year. I wish we got the shot of the car coming up on the, on the ramp. Call it the ramp. Yeah. That's so epic. It's so epic to everyone. Until they're doing it 14 times in a row and it's really slow. Really slow. Is that car? Uh, no, that is one of our friend's cars. Oh, That's his looks so similar. The same, yeah. same kit. Really good, yeah. What does the car start off as? Well, that's a 996. And his is a 996 as well? His is a 997. He is. Oh, so the reason people do it is because the 996 is the ugliest Porsche. It changes to that, so it looks better. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. sometimes I just bought a 997 anyway and changed it, so. Like the fourth or fifth kit made, I think. And it's, uh, so that's father and son. So Craig, who works with us, that's his car and that's his dad's car. And his Triple dad, we who owns the year. Porsche, built all this. Wow. He was wow. the builder for this. So our builder was car guy, our electrician. Jimmy Oaks is driving his car at the weekend. <laughs> uh, everybody who built it. Because obviously you can't just go to a normal person and say, I want to build a town in a warehouse uh, yeah. on the second floor in Dublin. <laughs> right. It's really cool. It all, I almost feel like you would go to someone that like builds theme parks, right? This is what, do you know what? This actually is from your invitation. Because we did a whole crazy event. Uh -huh. And then Jess, my wife and I went to Universal Studios for one day as a break in your Mustang. And I was standing in the middle of the Fast and the Furious ride saying, this is weird because it looks like it's a little town, a little garage, but it's not a garage. And I was like, that's mad. It must be cheap to build buildings inside because you don't need to do insulation, you don't do anything. Thus creating. Also, to be honest, it rains every day in Ireland. And we kind of said if we could make the outside inside and not have any rain, that would be okay. ideal for the winter here. Mm -hmm. So June 15th, we decided to take the lease. And at that point, we didn't even know we were doing this. And then two weeks ago, we finished it. That's crazy. <laughs> have, you, have you discussed a, a cost on video? Is that something you share? Or you we had a budget. We took a loan, as we always do. That's our favorite thing to do. And a 100,000 euro cost. And we got in at 101. Wow. So it's really close. Yeah. I feel like for, for what this place is, like, 
to build something similar in the states, I think would be more than that, much more. I'll put it this way: a lot of mates' rates involved in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, the boys were so enthusiastic about actually building it that they just sent more people and more stuff and they're like no no we'll do that no no what if we did this yeah no, no. so they were pumped on it too the day we painted the whole place inside black was like that was the day i thought we ruined the place because mm. it was the floor was black the roof was black everything's black it just looked like a black hole but then when we started putting stuff in it came together pretty good but in dublin rents are so high that second floor is obviously useless for a garage for somebody trying to bring cars in every day and also we don't have the pillars like they have downstairs so we have much more space. Mm. And because this was actually a meat processing plant where they used to literally grind meat here, they actually had all these drains which were for blood originally, which is a bit disgusting. <laughs> but it's really good for washing cars because you can wash your car inside and it all just flows outside. Do you do that? Yeah. No way. You can wash it with everything, every That's single part of it on, on a slant. So do you have a hose? Really? We don't have it in here now, but we can do it, yeah. So you can literally power hose the whole place and it just flows down. Everything's on a slant. I even love the, that. Even the finish of like the ceiling is like stupid of a detail as that is, like, it yeah. looks so good. Yeah, satin black, everything, painted all the wiring. Painted. You know, it's not like there's like a bunch of speckles or whatever, like it's very smooth. And it's not finished yet, but I'm A really cool cool. atmosphere will make a cool car ten times better. Well, we had, I think everyone, is, we had all these cars, but they all looked rubbish because they were just crushed into a corner with boxes on the roof. Now they're all kind of have their own space. Mm-hmm. And it also allows control where I have to sell a car to buy a car now to have a space. That's my new <laughs> Yeah. So we're like, well, we could squeeze a few more in, but we've still got a lot to finish. We've we're building this carcade, which is like a full arcade. So it's going to be all modern simulators <laughs> built into like 2000 units. Sick. So it looks like an old arcade, but it's all like new stuff, Fanatype, et cetera, course, and all that stuff. I'm trying to do like an eight link so everyone can sit down and race together. Because online stuff is cool, but it, I want to go back to the old school where your buddies yeah. come around and play like mm-hmm. in your house. We want to do that with just a little bit of flair on that. And then. Yeah, and on a workshop, we've done very little work here because it's all too clean. We're at that point now where we're like, you know what you is think? Is that the workshop? This is the, will be the workshop. We still God, have your Corvette looks so crazy. <laughs> it's a bit different than it looked last year. Hello. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like a Mad Max type looking thing. Yeah. Now, the the heartbreaking car was when I bought all the HGK carbon, which you guys sell in Rift HQ, and then Darren McMahon cuts 40% of it off on the floor instantaneously. <laughs> but the idea was that Basically, we wanted to make a Corvette that didn't look like anyone else's Corvette because when I built this car, it was like the third or, third or fourth maybe like drift build pro Corvette. And then obviously since then, everyone's building Corvettes and it's very hard to be unique. So I sent it to Darren. I never saw the design, never knew anything about it. And every time he would ring me, he's like, I think I've gone too far now. And then he would say, oh, I've gone a bit more far, I've gone a bit more far. And he said, no, nah, I just ran away with myself. So you know what he's like. Yep. So he's made a lot of funky bits and pieces. The fender is being very controversial. Mm-hmm. But he likes the fact that it's a McPherson strut, like a single seater race car. Yeah. So he was like, I like the idea. And he's even cut this angle so that when the car is on full lock, it's perfectly in line with mm-hmm. the car. So you can see the suspension working and everything. So, because we're obviously sponsored by BC and FDF. So for the first time ever, you can see it no matter where you're standing. <laughs> He did a lot of work. I think it's always with his design. It's like he started by wanting to do barge boards like an F1 car. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh, but now they look stupid with this. And then it just gradually became all of that. And then we thought it looked a bit like a jet fighter, so we themed it like that. I really want him to do something on my FC. The wing, the, the wing is my favorite. Yeah. And then because the wing was so heavy, he had to refabricate the whole back of the car to support the wing. <laughs> so the, all the fabrication is brand new again. This is what Colette is going to be driving at uh, Mandela. What's the deal with this thing? This car, pain in the ass, was a three-year build. So this is a Mazda Miata, or you guys, right? MX-5 for us. NC, so it's a 2000. Interesting story about this car was it's a pre-production car from Mazda that went as a hot lap car in Mandela Park. So it only had 4,000 kilometers on the shell, and it never saw like salt on the road for mm-hmm. us because it would never on the road. So we bought it when Mazda had finished their deal or whatever put an SR20 in it, blew up, put an SR20 in it, blew up, and then we figured out that the sump and stuff was wrong with it. We then put a very fancy SR in it. So this is the man that built the engine on this car. It's the same that built the one in your S15 last year. Oh, really? DY engines in the UK, Dave Yanda. So she's a really fancy, fancy car. Super clean, because it's done no full events, but now it is all good to go. Nearly 500 horsepower, six-speed sequential, RX-8 suspension. It's good to go. There's a lot with this car to unpack. 
Colette will be covering it more on her channel since she'll be driving it through the weekend. But I know this is a, a big moment for Josh to be able to... Three years he's been building at it and he's almost happier to be looking at it from the outside than the inside because he just wants to see the thing that drift. Yeah. Kind of like you with your car when she was driving it last year. Exactly. That's what you kept saying. I would say Colette's the easiest person to give a car to because she looks after them and she, she drives them hard. She does all the stress that thing. So this is my first time seeing this car. And also today I learned that not only am I gonna be competing in this car this weekend, but Dave's actually gonna be competing in the same car afterwards. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Well, we're lucky we're the same height. Because yeah. that was the biggest misery for the last week was the guy who built the car was quite short and had an unusual setup. So we got onto Ryan, who's our buddy who actually did all the fab on the Corvette and the MX-5. And I said, I got like five days to make this thing work. So all that's been changed. So the cage, had to be redone because your head would hit. So when you would put the seat back, the harness bar wouldn't fit, so we had to redo the harness bar. Then the cage would hit here, so they refabbed the cage. I want to sit in it. Let's hope all of that was worth it, because if it wasn't, I'm going to be very, very, very tired for the next <laughs> I've never, I've never even sat in this car in person yet, no. so this is, this is a lot to take in. Oh, there's plenty of headroom. Yep. That's great. So we lowered the floor and the seat in the floor. So so there's, like a, there's like a pedestal for the feet. Yes. Can I? Oh, wow. That's, I've never had floor mounted pedals. Yeah, they're a little bit to get used to. Yeah, you almost gotta like rest your heel on this, huh? Yes. So what's strange about this car is it has the electronic power steering on the column, which is really close to where the brake and the clutch were. Oh, so just, just to let you know how much of a rabbit hole this car went through for the last week, I said, can you just lower the seat? So unfortunately the water pipes for the rear rad went under the seat. <laughs> so they all had to be completely rerouted. Then yeah. when he went to lower the seat, he realized the head would hit the cage. So we redid the cage there and the harness bar. And then the actual power steering was hitting his feet. So he lowered the floor and put the pedals in there. Had to put a few new floor on the car. The handbrake was moved and the handbrake itself wasn't working properly. And then when we pulled the handbrake, we had to realize it wasn't locking properly. So we put dual calipers on the back. And after all that, we now have on, not today, but when he gets to the track on Friday, a full carbon fiber dashboard for the car as well. Jesus. So, so you gotta have those onboard shots looking good, right? <laughs> this thing has Now, as much as that sounds like I'm being very generous to Adam, yeah. I'm driving the car afterwards. So obviously right. I'm like, I'll, as long as he gets through the weekend, has a good time in it, he'll do all the stress testing for me. Mm -hmm. He'll give me some feedback on it, see how it goes. I used to compete in a Corolla and they're so much fun to drive, especially when you almost have too much power for the grip, I think. <laughs> This thing is going to be wild. Like we have low boost on it at the moment at 460, and high is 540. Mm -hmm. But oh, and also from the update from the last video, Mike, because everyone will be saying, "Why are you running reps on the car, Adam?" We now have from Japan three-day shipping. Works the zero ones all around. I didn't even get to look at them. And we're running the reps as spared. Approved. We're running, we're running the reps as spared. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny. We couldn't find as good an offset in the real wheel as it was in the reps. Right, but, that's funny. Which is really funny. <laughs> But they are proper jobs, so the reps are the spares. Yeah. Because uh, buying ten of them would yeah, have been no. pretty tough going. Um, but yeah, we can adjust things. The only thing we're going to try and look at adjusting is the steering wheel. So I think everything is pretty much perfect for me. I just need to, if I can move the seat closer somehow. I don't know how much of a pain in the ass that'll be. I'm like, if I'm sitting in the seat, I'm like you're stretching full extension. Yeah. So if I could be just a little bit closer to the wheel, which like I could technically achieve with cushions. But ba basically no at the moment, we're, there's two th options we have. One is we can put a further spacer on the steering wheel to bring it closer, but I think the pedal is the problem then. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's both. So basically, I think Ryan could be a little bit taller. So I basically said, Ryan, make it fit you because he's similar height to us. He's got long legs. Mm -hmm. So I think we can just push it a little bit forward and it'll probably solve the problem. Can we start it? Uh, in here, you can, but the fumes can get... We haven't got the extractor fan in here yet. Can we, we start it for like two seconds? Of course How do you do that? No idea. I've never done this guy. I think it's that's it. No idea. <laughs> no idea at all. That's the first bit, yep. And then is it on the roof? No. This might be a kill switch. That's the kill switch, I'd say, which I think should be on. And then... You are in the line of fire. This button maybe has to it. Figuratively. Oh, it's and it's with brakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, there we go. We're on the roof. Initially. You found it? It's on the roof. Well, where else would it be but on the roof? Remember, it dumps out here. Just like keeps it in boost? Keeps it in boost. 
And it just goes bang, 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 bang. Cheater. Cheater? <laughs> you got an SR20, that's the album motor. That also has anti lag as well. <laughs> Not a cheater. Totally fine now. <laughs> yeah, this thing spits like four foot flames when it's hot out the side. Like, really? It's really cool. Is it is it super loud like in your face or it's not too bad? The flames? Yeah. It's only when the anti lag's on. Got it. So it's obviously dumping every time you let off the throttle, but if you don't put the anti lag on, I don't think there's as much lag in it anyway, but again, we're both learning together, Adam, because I've never really seen it either. So yeah. I'm watching hey, it going, I don't know. The door shut. Be careful with Should that window, bro. I guess it's something. I just gotta give it a good slam. <laughs> As you guys know, the event is Saturday and Sunday. That'll be the first time that I'm driving this thing. I'm super excited. I know that it's cool and it's going to be a lot of fun. And there are a lot of cars that are literally being built just for this event. That's never happened before here. Because usually we're like borrowing this and that. But the fact that we're actually putting cars together to fit the personalities of people, we still have more to reveal. I think like Colette's car, your car, really fit your whole vibe. And also just to see you in a Corolla in Ireland because that this chassis built the whole drift scene in Ireland. So. Even though we've come so far with Driftmasters and FD to come all the way back again to the start of what, and then see how your reaction to, I don't know, just you driving the Corolla over the hill in Mandela just feels like we're in 2008 again. So mm -hmm. it's cool. Like, and I think everyone's going to be pumped to see it. And because you don't know how you're going to do, I think it's like an unknown as well. We all know you can drive S bodies. We all know you can drive like Mustangs and stuff, but this is totally like blank slate for you. So it's going to be a challenge. Like we have for the first time ever in competition in Europe in about 10 years, five 86s on the grid out of 29 drivers. Because Luke's driving one too, right? Yeah, and we got Sultan's one in there as well. We got a couple of them in there. It's going to be fun. And then we didn't, we didn't announce what, uh, what Hertz driving yet, did we? We can say it though. Hertz yeah. driving our Verosa, so he's driving a big body and we're building it as a bit of a replica of his car in the US. But nobody's seen it yet, even I haven't seen it. It's currently being wrapped at the moment by Precision Tint Graphics, same guys that did this. So a lot of panic. And everybody's rolling in, it's getting exciting. There's a lot more to unpack and uh, show in this video, but I'm excited to finally get to see this thing first. The wrap came out amazing. I'm glad that we like kind of moved away from the yellow in the front, kept it orange. Believe it or not, this car was designed after the t-shirt that was made before the car was even wrapped. Yep. <laughs> so Josh, who does all our art, uh, we basically tasked him with making the event merch that was based around this car and what we thought it was gonna look like. So when we came to wrap it, we are going through trying to make it look like the car on the t-shirt, which is kind of where it came Yeah, out. it went backwards to the t-shirt. From Originally it was just going to be yellow, it's red, but I think the, the orange was the look. I think it, it came out really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Saved us the color and print too. Yep. <laughs> I, I was about to say, well, it's easier to change one wrap than a lot of t-shirts, so yeah. there's a better way of doing it. It's rain. That's normal here. It doesn't bother us. Sounds oh, like the compound. Yeah. You know, the worst thing is I got to take your livery off, and I think it just suits the car so well. <laughs> like, Ah, does, how, do I, how do I top that? It's very cool. I love the two-tone. Yeah, no, it's like it. the old school look of the two-tone with mm -hmm. a new school kind of. Yeah, I was, I was worried if we went full body like color, which I'll put, we'll put a photo of on the screen. It almost looks like two two drift boy, two like stance boy drift boy. I would say the black still, makes it. Feel I think a it would bit still look school. good. And I was maybe leaning more that way, but then you went with this, and I actually agree now that I see it that it's perfect. A little more, a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, and she's a good little car. Like it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be fun, and it sounds sick, and it's got flames, and it pops and bangs, and like it's a proper like little rocket ship. I'm gonna be giggling like a school schoolgirl when I drive this. I'm still on like three, four hours of sleep, so my facial expressions don't let you, don't let that misjudge my excitement for this thing. Well, I think on Friday. Like you're gonna be woken up pretty quickly. At Do we get to test it on Friday? Yeah. Ah, sweet. So when you throw it sideways at 75 miles an hour, then I think you'll be pretty woken. I'm up. going at 95. <laughs> <laughs> 75. Those are rookie numbers. We're, and it'll do Move it. the start line back. <laughs> I don't know. 15 inch tires and 500 horsepower. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. So do you think I'm gonna be at a disadvantage because my wheels are smaller, or do you think the weight will offset that? Like, it's what's a, the tread width on this compared to like what other people will be running? So you're running a 205, and they're running 255 or 265. But I don't think it's going to make any difference on that layout because that's a momentum layout. There's no hard pulls. So it's all firing into a first corner. Lightweight, generally in that track, works best because you can go faster through the first corner without washing off the track. So oh I think, gosh. I think it's going to be the 205s. What are you running on your E36? I heard Luke's on 265s. And he is, but Corollas don't work on 265s. I'm just going to put it out there. They don't. A lot of people have tried. You've also got Driftworks 86, which is also on 18s, but... I think this two six it. fives. Yeah, <laughs> I think it'll still be faster. I'm wondering. So, are do we? We already have tires ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Are the the reps less wide or are they the same width? More wide. 
Gotcha. And do you think we'll roll into the sideboard, or do you think we'll be aired up no, enough where that won't matter? It's fine. Both are fine. We check both. It's actually better stance with the reps. Really? Yeah. Because actually, they don't make these three or ones really in yeah. as wide as they do. But uh, either way, it's fine. And to be honest with you, I think you're going to find on the first couple of laps that this we have a, a video of this car chasing your S15 from last year in Mondello, and your old car is on semi sticks, and this car is on road tires, and it's staying with it the whole way. So. I think the weight is the big difference. In that track it is. I have a muffler on my fender exit. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I was worried it was gonna blow my ears out. I didn't even well, know they, they had a it. couple of goes at it, obviously, because they went here at one point. And they're like, oh, it's too loud. Nah, it's too loud, let's go that way. I like it though. Yeah. It's neat. It seems like a simple car. Yeah. It's not overkill in any, in any shape or form. It's got the great combination of Toyota, uh, Nissan, BMW and Volvo in the one car. <laughs> There's some stuff on this because we're still digging in because we didn't build it. We're, we're, we're going like, it all works, so let's not change too much. Right. But then we're going, let's investigate as we go along mm -hmm. what any of this is doing. Maybe we can make this better or yeah. that better. It's going to be a work in progress for us. But the one thing is that the guy who drove this came to our last few events and all we did was sit on the pit wall going, that is a cool car. And, yeah. it, and it ran all weekend, no problem. So we were like, it's obviously a good car to drive. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it's a good starting point. And he put a lot of love and effort into the car. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is this car was built for Formula D. I was telling you that earlier off camera. So originally it was gonna to go to Formula D years and years ago. And it got abandoned as a shell, completely fabricated. And then it was picked up and finished. So the guy that's coming back drifting this weekend, Eric O'Sullivan, who was an FD, hasn't drifted in 10 years. And that was his car. And he's back at this event. And so now he gets to compete. He against gets to compete it? against the car that he was building for FD this weekend. So there's a lot of little stories going on. Yeah, that's cool. I just noticed it has fire suppression too. That's cool. Yep, that's legal here. You have to have a problem with it. I feel like the, the biggest thing is that it's rear radiator. That's not like I feel like common for an 86 at least over in the states. Most people just try to cram it in the front and then have overheating issues. I think when they put the wooden JZ in, they went, "Well, that's the space gone there, mm -hmm. so we'll have to yeah. put it somewhere else." <laughs> Pretty heavy. Uh, what do you call this? A boot? Yeah, this is a booter, we call these Corollas. Really? You guys call them a Corolla. <laughs> but we have to call them, distinguish them, because we got the coupe as the standard UK version. Mm -hmm. And we don't call it a coupe, we just call that an 86. And then we refer to these as a booter, because they have a boot. Hmm. Not it, much of a boot. But not much of a boot. And these are actually rarer here really? than, than the coupes, yeah. What are you talking about? Talking a boot and the coupe. We don't say, we don't say coupe in Ireland either. For some reason, we're not we're not we're not posh enough to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love the brake light. Yeah, in the inside of the car, for some reason. When I use the brakes, it says brakes. You mean the coward pedal? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Man, everyone's gonna know when I'm left foot braking and before transition, making people hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Drive the car. <laughs> much to cover but we're all super tired and jet lagged we basically like left at night didn't sleep that much and then it started a new morning here I'm stoked to be able to get to see this thing in person way more stoked to drive it uh, but this is an amazing place and I'm glad we were able to share a bit of it with you let me know what else you want to see on our Ireland adventure we have the world tour this weekend at Mondello Park looking forward to seeing you all there all the homies flying tomorrow so it's gonna be hectic but it's gonna be a good time Bro, that, that trucker was laughing his ass off at you. <laughs> he's like, this dude does not know what he's doing. I didn't know what to do. I was like, uh, I don't know.
stop? Did they stop? I don't know what these signs mean. Any driving with Adam and Colette, man, but get me out of the car with James. <laughs> this guy, we're, we're almost 14 accidents already about to happen, man.